So this week, I look at one year with the FLM CP30 S4 Mark II tripod. So I've been using this tripod for a little over a year now. When I first started using it, I did do a video on it and sort of the whole FLM line as far as specs go, and specifically this tripod. I will link to that video down in the description. Just promise not to laugh. It was one of my earlier videos, so hopefully I've improved a little bit in content quality since then, um, but I will link to it down below. Before I get into how this tripod has held up over the past year and what I think of it, let's talk about its specs just a little bit. So again, this tripod is the CP30 S4 Mark II. The CP means it is carbon fiber leg sections. The 30 means the top tube diameter is 30 millimeters. And the S4 means it's the small version, so the legs aren't quite as long as some of the other versions in the FLM tripod line. And the four means there's four sections. One, two, three, four. And then the two means it's the second version of this tripod, and it is the most current as of the video. So this tripod does have a max height of 53.4 inches right here. If you put a ball head or whatever kind of tripod head you're using on it, that'll get you, you know, another three or four inches on top. But the tripod itself is 53.4 inches. It can get down as low to the ground as 3.6 inches. Again, at this base plate, not when you start putting your ball head on top. It weighs right about 2.8 pounds, has a load capacity of 44.1 pounds, and then folds up to a length of 18.9 inches when it's all collapsed and folded, again, to this base plate without the ball head on top. It does use twist locks for its leg mechanisms, so you just give it a twist, put it in like that. And in addition to the twist locks on the legs, it also has a nice little ratcheting mechanism up here at the top, right here. You can pull it, or you can push it from behind, and once you open it up, it snaps into place, and then you can just ratchet it down one, two, then closed. So that's super handy when you have to have gloves on or anything like that. Not a lot of fumbling with this. Just pop that lock, open it up, and ratchet down. And also has a tripod level right here on the top to make sure you're all set up. So it does have rubber and spiked feet as an option for the base of the tripod, and it does come with a 10-year warranty. There is also a large version of this tripod, which will stand at a maximum height of 68.3 inches, and then fold down to 23 inches. So it'll be a little longer, and they do that obviously by making these sections a little longer than they are on the small tripod. So when I chose this tripod a little over a year ago, what I was looking for was sort of an all-around tripod, something I could carry out in the field, knowing there's gonna be hiking distances with it. So I wanted something somewhat light, and I also wanted to be able to fly with it with minimal difficulty, be able to put it in my camera bag and not draw too much attention by airport security or anything like that. So those are the two big factors that went into it. So I started doing my research. FLM, the name FLM kept coming up. I kept seeing it in videos. And then I hit the center column website that does pretty in-depth reviews on tripods and ball heads and things like that. And what I noticed was this FLM tripod was right up there towards the top of their tripod rankings. And so I did some more research and I started looking at them and it seemed like a really attractive option. This S4 version with the slightly shorter legs made it so that it would pack up nice and small to be able to take on trips that required flying by airplane. It meant it would strap to the side of my pack without catching on lots of branches when I was on tighter trails. And that's sort of what led me to try this FLM tripod, specifically the series, the small version, because it seemed to meet those two requirements. That's why I chose the CP30 S4 versus the L4 just because I felt it was more portable. And it's a tripod I've been carrying for a little over a year now. And regular watchers will certainly recognize this tripod from my past videos. I've been carrying it around again for like a little over a year, and it's been through the rain, it's been through the snow, it's been through the cold, it's been through the heat. It's flown with me to the southwestern U.S. for photography trips out there. It's traveled with me to West Virginia in the Virginia area for photography trips there, and in countless trips here in my local area, my local region. And I would say I use this tripod at least once, twice a week, so it sees very regular use and lots of being put up, down, put in different configurations and lots of different scenarios to be shooting from. Now I typically shoot with Nikon mirrorless, most often these days a Z7 II or a Z6 II, most often it's the Z7 II though. And the lenses I have mounted on the front of the camera range anything from a 1430 wide angle, fairly lightweight, doesn't stick out too far, all the way up to like a Sigma 100 to 400, which does have some weight to it. And all of them have worked just fine on this tripod. I've had no stability issues, even with that Sigma 100 to 400 up on here, it's been super stable. I had it out in West Virginia during some relatively windy weather, did fine. I was in Virginia doing a sunset, another windy day, and everything was pretty rock solid with this tripod. So I have no complaints about the stability of this tripod, and it's been working out just fine with that particular camera system. 
and like I said, with extremely regular use in all sorts of weather conditions. The twist locks mean great. They are aluminum twist locks. There's no rubber on them or anything like that. And so all through the elements, I don't have any rubber grips getting loose or slip or having anything, any problems like that. So the twist locks work great. Simple twist, nice and turn. Everything stays nice, tight, secure when I tighten it or loosen it. All the actions on this tripod work just like they did when it was new. And that's with lots of use over the past year. One of the things that FLM tripod does is uses sort of a cork rubber mix up here at the top, both to give it some little bit of vibration reduction and give it a little bit of sturdiness. And I've had no problems with the ball head sitting up on top of here. I use a Sarui K30, I think is what I put up here typically, and I've had no problems with that. This cork is holding up just fine, and I've had no problem with any kind of vibration through this little interface to the tripod top. So this FLM tripod hasn't let me down yet. I use it all the time. Everything is nice, sturdy, still in good shape, hasn't required any repair, and I haven't even had to do any real tightening to the legs or anything like that, so it's continued to serve me very well. I think it's sort of a hidden brand in that whole tripod market, and I feel like the FLM price-to-quality ratio is extremely good, and if you're looking for a new tripod or something that's lightweight, sturdy, without paying super high prices, then I think an FLM tripod is a great one to look at. It's still not the cheapest tripod out there, but again, I feel like that price to quality ratio can't be beat. And finally, since it's so hard to tell sometimes in YouTube videos, I paid for this tripod with my own money. I wasn't sponsored. I wasn't given this tripod. I wasn't giving a discount on this tripod. It's one I purchased with my own money um, because I know how important that is. You're always wondering, well, is this guy getting paid to say this? And now uh, I bought this with my own money, and I would happily purchase another FLM tripod in the future. So after a year of use, I have no problem recommending the FLM tripod brand to people. While I went with sort of the all-purpose, a little shorter tripod to be able to travel with it a little more easily or take it on tight trails where it wasn't snagging lots of things, there's several tripods in FLM's line that all follow this line of craftsmanship and materials. They're just different versions as far as like the tube diameter and height. So while maybe you want something that's a little taller, by all means take a look at FLM's website. There's a nice chart on there. I'll link to the website in my description below. And you can see all the comparisons from the weight of the tripod to how high it goes to how low it goes. And I'm sure you'll find something that'll work for you. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future landscape photography content from me. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.